O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew The Call of Matthew As Jesus passed on from there, He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Comments from the Church Fathers St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 1 Christ, after having performed the miracle, did not remain in that place, so as not to feed the envy of the Jews even more. Let us also do the same, let us not remain obstinately resisting those who trap us. That is why it is said, as Jesus passed on from there, that is, from the place where he had performed the miracle of healing the paralytic, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. St. Jerome The other evangelists, Mark 2 and Luke 5, out of respect and honor to the same Matthew, did not want to call him by the name by which he was commonly known, but called him Levi, because he used these two names. But Matthew himself, following what Solomon says, the righteous is the first accuser of himself, Proverbs 18 verse 17, calls himself Matthew and a tax collector, to show all who read him that no one should despair of his salvation if he is converted to a better life, and that he himself has been suddenly transformed from a tax collector into an apostle. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas It is said that he was sitting on the screen, telling us that he was in one of those houses where taxes were received. He was therefore called Telenarius, for the Greek word telos means tax. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 1. By this event we are shown the power of him who calls, for he plucks out of the midst of evil a man who did not renounce a dangerous office, as he did with Paul, who was mad. Therefore it follows, he said to him, Follow me. As you have seen the power of him who calls, so learn the obedience of him who is called. He does not put up any resistance, nor does he ask to return to his house and communicate his decision to his own. Remigius of Auxerre He judged as a small thing the human dangers that could befall him from his leaders, whom he had abandoned without giving detailed explanations of his fate. Hence it is said, and he got up and followed him. And as he abandoned earthly gains, he was justly made by God the steward of the Lord's talents. St. Jerome. At this point, Porphyry and the Emperor Julian accuse either the lack of knowledge of the historian who does not narrate the truth of history, or the folly of those who immediately followed the Savior, as if they unreasonably followed the first man who had appeared and called, when, indeed, such great powers and signs preceded him, which the apostles certainly saw before they believed. Certainly the very brilliance and majesty of the hidden divinity, which also shone on her human face, could draw those who saw her at the first meeting. If, then, it is said that in the magnet stone there is the power to attract iron, how much more could the Lord of all creatures draw to himself those whom he willed? St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 1. But why didn't he call Matthew at the same time that he called Peter and John and the others? 
because he was still insensitive, but after many miracles and the great deal of news about Christ, he who knows the inmost part of his heart called him when he knew that he was more fit for obedience. St. Augustine, De Consensu Evangelisterum, 2, 26. It seems more probable that Matthew speaks here of his vocation by recalling what he had previously omitted, because it is possible that his call took place before the Sermon on the Mount, since Luke places on the mountain the twelve elect, whom he called apostles, Luke 6. Matthew regards as one of the miracles his own calling, for indeed it was a great miracle that a publican was made an apostle. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 1. Why is it that the manner and time in which the other apostles were called are not narrated, but only those of Peter, Andrew, James, John, and Matthew? Precisely because all these had an inferior job and were of humble condition. There is, in fact, nothing lower than the office of tax collector, nor more vile than the condition of fishermen. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas. As a meet return for the heavenly mercy, Matthew prepared a great feast for Christ in his house, bestowing his temporal goods on him of whom he looked to receive everlasting goods. It follows, while he was at table in his house. St. Augustine, De Consensu Evangelisterum, 2, 27. Matthew has not said in whose house Jesus sat at meat, on this occasion, from which we might suppose, that this was not told in its proper order but that what took place at some other time is inserted here as it happened to come into his mind, did not Mark and Luke who relate the same show that is was in Levi's, that is, in Matthew's house. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 2. Matthew, seeing himself so honored by Jesus coming to his house, invites all the publicans who were his professional colleagues. And this is what the words mean, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas. The publicans were they who were engaged in public business, which seldom or never can be carried on without sin. And a beautiful omen of the future, that he that was to be an apostle and doctor of the Gentiles, and his first conversion draws after him a great multitude of sinners to salvation, already performing by his example what he was shortly to perform by word. St. Jerome. Tertullian says that these tax collectors were Gentiles, based on the words of Scripture, there will be no tax on Israel, as if Matthew were not a Jew. This opinion is not admissible, since Jesus does not eat with the Gentiles, lest he be thought to have broken the law who gave the following advice to his disciples, Do not go among the Gentiles, Matthew 10 verse 5. Seeing the publicans one of their own converted from sins to a better life, they thus found room for penance, and therefore did not despair of their own salvation. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 2. The publicans came to our Redeemer not only to speak to Him, but also to eat with Him. For Jesus not only often corrected those who were ill-disposed, by His arguments, by His works, or by His rebukes to His enemies, but also by eating with them, thus teaching us that we may profit at any time and from any work. When the Pharisees saw this, they were indignant, and therefore it is said of them, the Pharisees saw this and said to His disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? It should be noted here that the Pharisees, when they thought they had caught Christ in some sin, turned to him, as is seen by these words, Behold, your disciples do what it is not lawful to do on the Sabbath, Matthew 12 verse 2. In this way they tried to dishonor Christ before their disciples. All this they did with malice and with a desire to separate the hearts of his disciples from the Master. Rabinus Morrow The Pharisees were prisoners of two errors. In the haughtiness of pride, they thought themselves righteous, being very far from justice, and they considered unjust all those who, repenting of their sins, approached justice. St. Augustine, De Consensu Evangelisterum, 2, 27. Luke narrates this same event in slightly different terms. According to him, the Pharisees said to the disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and with sinners? Luke 5 verse 30, thus implying that the fault was equally extended to the Master and to the disciples. For what is said of the disciples, with all the more reason must it be said of the Master, since they, following Him, did nothing but imitate His conduct. 
The thought, therefore, is the same, and this is all the more certain because it has the same meaning at bottom, although expressed in different terms. St. Jerome Not those who continue in their former vices, as the Pharisees and scribes murmur, come to Jesus, but those who do penance for them. This is what those words of the Lord mean, he heard this and said, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Rabinus Morrow He calls himself a physician who, using a wonderful art of healing, was wounded because of our wickedness, that we might be healed of the wound of our sins. He rightly calls healthy those who, wishing to establish a righteousness of their own, do not submit to the true justice of God, Romans 10, and sick those who, overcome by the consciousness of their frailty and not seeing justification by the law, submit themselves by repentance to the grace of God. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 2. After having spoken to them according to common sense, he quotes that passage of Scripture, Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. St. Jerome. He uses the testimony of the prophet Hosea to condemn the scribes and Pharisees who, considering themselves righteous, tried to avoid all contact with sinners and publicans. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30, 3. It is as if you were saying, Why do you condemn me for calling sinners to penance? You should then accuse God the Father, because He desires, as I do, that sinners should make amends, and in this way He showed them that not only was what they rebuked not forbidden, but that according to the law it was something superior to sacrifice. For the law does not say, I desire mercy and sacrifice but commands the former and excludes the latter. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas Yet does not God contemn sacrifice, but sacrifice without mercy. But the Pharisees often offered sacrifices in the temple that they might seem to men to be righteous, but did not practice the deeds of mercy by which true righteousness is proved. Rabinus Morrow he thus warns the Pharisees to merit the divine reward through the works of his own mercy, and not to trust that it will be pleasing to God to offer sacrifices when the needs of the poor are not taken into account. And he adds, Go, that is, abandon this temerity of stupid condemnation, and meditate with greater diligence on the holy scriptures, which so much recommend mercy. And by those words, I did not come to call the righteous but sinners, he gives us, by his example, a lesson of mercy. St. Augustine, De Consensu Evangelisterum, 2, 27. Luke adds penance, Luke 5 verse 32, which means, developing his thought, that no one should judge that Christ loves sinners simply because they are sinners. Moreover, comparison with the sick gives us a clear understanding of what God wants, calling sinners as a physician calls the sick, that is, to save them from iniquity as from a disease, which is achieved through penance. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 9. But Christ came for all men. How then is it said that he did not come for the righteous? Were there some who had no need of his coming? But no one is fair by law. And he teaches us how foolish is the presumption of righteousness, because sacrifices were of no value unto salvation, but mercy was necessary to all that were under the law. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 30. 3. It seems that Jesus speaks here to the Pharisees with the same irony as when he says, Behold, Adam has become like one of us, Genesis 3 verse 22. For there was no righteous man on earth, which is what Paul implies in the words, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3 verse 23, words that soothe those who had been called, as if to say, I am so far from abhorring sinners that I have come only for their sake. Rabinus Morrow. In the call of Matthew and the publicans is figured the faith of the Gentiles who first gaped after the gain of the world, and are now spiritually refreshed by the Lord, in the pride of the Pharisees, the jealousy of the Jews at the salvation of the Gentiles. Or, Matthew signifies the man intent on temporal gain, Jesus sees him, when he looks on him with the eyes of mercy. For Matthew is interpreted given, Levi taken, the penitent is taken out of the mass of the perishing, and by God's grace given to the church. And Jesus saith unto him, 
follow me, either by preaching, or by the admonition of Scripture, or by internal illumination. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the Gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please, Lord,